So what uh, most of my work and our recent work is on uh, is um, looking at the distribution and motion of satellite galaxies throughout their host. So you, you have a massive galaxy like the Milky Way, Andromeda, or in this case, Taurus A, and they have their own entourage of smaller galaxies, which um, are expected to be distributed rather randomly. So if you look at cosmological simulations, you get predictions for where should they be relative to their host galaxy. And it looks more or less like a very fluffy ball of smaller satellite galaxies moving around in all kinds of directions. Now, if we look at the observed systems, we see that um, the satellite galaxies prefer to be aligned along kind of planar distributions. So not spherical, but more planar. And um, in addition to that, they seem to move within those planes in a coherent set. So for Centaurus A, we, um, we have 16 satellite galaxies for which there are velocity measurements. And because we see the plane more or less edge on, we can see that on one half, on one side of the plane, galaxies are moving away from us. On the other side, they are approaching, so we kind of look at it from the edge like a spinning wheel, and we see one side moving away from us, the other one moving towards us. So that's the indication that this is a rotating plane. Um, this all was kind of motivated by earlier work on the Milky Way galaxy and its satellite galaxies, which are also distributed in this um, what we call vast polar structure. So it's also a satellite plane. We have the benefit of being able to measure the proper motions, which means um, the tangential velocities on the sky. And in that case, we could really say in which direction, in three dimensions, do these galaxies move, and we see that they prefer to move along this plane indeed. So we have this 3D information for the Milky Way, for Centaurus A, as well as for Andromeda, we only see kind of one component of the velocity, but it's consistent with this picture of a rotating plane of satellite galaxy. Um, so, yeah, this can be um, then compared to our cosmological expectations, which is basically you have a computer simulation, you set it up. For Centaurus A, we get it in less than 1 in 200 cases. Um, so we should, on average, look at 200 of these, these kind of systems before we find one which is as extreme as the one we see. But we only look at one and we already found it. And Similarly, Milky Way and Andromeda are similarly unlikely. So, taking all these together, um, it poses a real problem for our understanding of cosmology. But even for somebody working on this professionally, it's, it's also difficult to keep up because there are dozens of papers coming out every day. So, what I do, for example, is you, you check this um, archive, which is a preprint server, try to check it every day and see which papers are interesting and um, Hopefully, find the time to read one or two of them. So I've been kind of struggling with these, these satellite planes for past, I don't know, six, seven years at least. Internal dynamics of galaxies, which seem to adhere very well to what one would expect. I think that, that is definitely telling us something. Whether it's telling us something about the gravitational dynamics or about the properties of dark matter, it's a different question. So what I think is um, the standard model of cosmology, this, this code dark matter model, is probably not completely correct. So I think we definitely need some kind of modification. And so what I'm really interested in, and uh, I think it's a uh, really good avenue of research, uh, these kinds of hybrid models which try to marry the successes of dark matter as well as modified gravity. I think that's really a direction um, which should at least give us, give up, give us hope that we have many creative ideas and we are uh, able to somehow solve this.